Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Bulfat. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa yesterday returned to the Kingdom of Bahrain following a private visit to the Kingdom of Morocco. His Majesty the King was received on arrival by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. In the presence of the chairman of the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club's High Committee, Zainal Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the club today held the 11th race meeting of the 2021-22 season at its recourse in Rafah Sakhir. Their Highnesses, Sheikh's, Sheikh's representatives of the sponsors and equestrian sports fans also attended the eight-round race, which was held for the Cups of the late Abdullah Nas. Nas establishment, Gulf City Cleaning, Applied Science University, and Bludan Veternity Supplies trophies were presented to the winners.
The Representatives Council Speaker Fawzi Yazain Al met with the Chairman of the Al Ahram Foundation, Abdul Mahsin Salama, in Cairo. The Chairman of Al Ahram Foundation expressed appreciation of the advancement of Bahraini women, stressing that reaching the elected councils through the democratic practice, apart from the quota system, is an assertion of the far sighted vision to rely on competence. Mr. Salama praised the achievements of Bahraini women and their active participation in the kingdom's development. He commended the wise leadership of his his Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the efforts of the government led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the visions and directives of Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women. The board chairman underlined deep rooted relations between Bahrain and Egypt, stressing keenness of His Majesty the King and Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al Sisi to further boost them. He stressed the specificity of bilateral relations and concordance of visions regarding various issues. For her part, the Representatives Council Speaker expressed appreciation of visiting Al Ahram premises, stressing the strength of the Bahrain Egyptian ties and mutual keenness to further cement them. She also commended the efforts of the Egyptian president in building modern Egypt, lauding its pivotal role in fostering security and stability in the Arab world. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fawziya Zain Al met in Cairo yesterday with the Egyptian Prime Minister Mustafa Medbouli, during which she conveyed the greetings and of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, and His Highness's good wishes to the leadership, government, and people of Egypt. During the meeting, the Egyptian Prime Minister praised the efforts of His Royal Highness in promoting all bilateral cooperation. She praised the efforts of the Kingdom in containing the pandemic, as well as its values of tolerance and coexistence. For her part, the Speaker Zainal expressed pride in the bilateral relations. She and stressed the importance of parliamentary cooperation in the interests of both countries and people. Minister of Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning, Assam Khalaf, paid an inspection a field visit to development and service projects in the Southern Governorate. These projects come in support of the goals of the comprehensive development process led by His Majesty the King and based on the approval of the Council of Ministers headed by His Royal Highness Crown Prince and Prime Minister. The minister indicated that the development projects included the development of Block 939 in Rafah through the establishment of a sewage network and the establishment of a rainwater drainage network in the Al Hajiyat area. In addition to the Street 77 development project, where a public tender was launched for the first phase with the aim of reducing traffic congestion. The project also includes constructing a rainwater drainage network, providing sidewalks for pedestrians and other necessary safety and security matters. Following the Royal Directives to provide 40,000 housing units and the Directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to dispute 2,000 housing units, the Ministry of Housing continued to take all precautionary necessary to distribute the units in the new housing project. The new cities of Bahrain have excellent facilities and services as they provide social housing that includes all facilities and services as well as models specifically for people with special needs. The Ministry also said that the project aim to meet the aspirations of the citizens and is in line with the visions of the leadership and is also in line to the pan-economic recovery plan. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Kingdom of Bahrain condemned the Houthi terrorist militia's attempt to attack Abha International Airport with a drone, which reflects the militia's continuation of their systematic attacks to target civilians and innocents. The Ministry commends the vigilance of the coalition forces to support the legitimacy in Yemen, stressing the support of the Kingdom of Bahrain for the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in all the measures it takes to ensure the security and safety of its lands, citizens and residents. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Health urged parents to take the antivirus vaccination for their children to go directly to the health centers to provide them with the necessary protection to preserve their health and safety. It stressed that there is no need to take a prior appointment to receive the vaccination. The ministry stressed the need to vaccinate children aged from 3 to 17 years to protect them and their families and society, especially in light of the long incubation period of the virus in these groups in the event of infection pointing out that vaccination plays a major role in forming their immunity, immunizing them and ensuring their safety.
The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced uh, that uh, they have taken the first dose of the vaccine and the booster dose. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. And the Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 940,000 with 55 recovery, 940 with 55 recoveries, 181 registered new cases and no deaths. 52 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 105 are contacts of active cases and 24 are travel related. The Ministry urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for combating the coronavirus. The Higher Education Council issued a statement to students regarding the mechanism for setting for final exams in light of the application of the yellow level as a precaution in the Kingdom of Bahrain. The statement indicated that all students of higher education institutions will be optional to sit for the exam either in presence or remotely. The Higher Education Council noted that this announcement comes for health and safety of students of higher education institutions and educational and administrative staff in support of national efforts to to confront the coronavirus. Meanwhile, the University of Bahrain Board decided to conduct the final exams for the first semester of the current academic year remotely for all students at all academic levels for their safety. The board announced the online exams in line with the developments highlighted by the National Medical Task Force for combating COVID-19. The board pointed out that all students enrolled at the University of Bahrain will sit their first term exams on January 3 to 13 remotely according to the dates of the schedules announced on the university's website site and student information system. An official source at Bahrain's National Carrier Gulf Air said that all Gulf Air flights are operating according to the usual schedule without delay and at their full capacity. The official commended the efforts of Gulf Air's cabin crew that have successfully ensured the airline continues to work in full capacity. The source further commended the commitment of all employees of the fleet's aircrafts to the precautionary measures since the onset of the global pandemic to preserve the safety of all. The official stressed that Gulf Air is committed to following all the health precautionary measures approved by the International Civil Aviation Organization, the ICAO.